one challenge for people is figuring out, is this relationship going anywhere? Uh, and uh, I think the following uh, example will nicely illustrate uh, the strategic thinking that goes into this. So my friend was dating this fellow who had gotten divorced, uh, and they were living together, they were in love, they were happy, and he kept on saying that they'd get married, but it'd been kind of a while. And uh, could they buy a house together? Could they uh, live in together? And he, well, they had a daughter from the previous marriage, and she wasn't really quite ready to see dad make this step. And the question was, how could she feel comfortable that they were really going to go somewhere uh, and uh, yet somehow not make this public? And what she came up with was the following idea, that uh, he would get a tattoo. Uh, it could be a discreet tattoo uh, with her name. Uh, and if he was willing to do that, she was willing to uh, stay with him. Uh, and when he wasn't, she realized that uh, he was, uh, you know, I guess the, the, the classic Peter Pan uh, in this regard. And uh, this illustrates the point of signaling. The signaling is taking an action which is really convincing other people, and perhaps yourself, that what you're saying is true. So getting a tattoo is relatively speaking inexpensive if you are planning to spend the rest of your life with this person, but it isn't so uh, inexpensive if uh, you have other plans. And we're always trying to go and send credible signals to other people because talk is cheap. So another example in my own sort of sphere is uh, it's important, uh, why, why do many women go to business school? It's pretty expensive, uh, it takes two years of your life, but many employers are worried that uh, a woman is going to uh, leave the career to go and have children, start a family. Uh, and you ask the person in the interview, well, one, that might be illegal to ask them, but even if you did, um, they're all going to say, no, 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 I'm, I'm here for the career. Um, on the other hand, if the person can say, you know, I just spent $70,000 in tuition, two years of my life getting this training, I wouldn't have done that unless I was intending to pay it back. And so the fact that I went and did this activity should be great evidence to you that I am serious about my career. Other people will say it, I've taken an action, which is really of that uh, category. And, and then the little one is, this is, you know, the, uh, the Hermes tie, right? I mean, why, why spend, waste so much money on this tie? Well, because I'm going to be the person who will ultimately have the job that means I'll be wearing this thing and it was actually going to pay it back. Somebody else can say, oh, they're going to have this, but I've already proven that it's, uh, it's worth my while to do this. Well, appreciating that uh, many contracts are subject to renegotiation, and so uh, one, uh, when you have a kid, uh, there's a question of who's going to get up in the middle of the night. Uh, and uh, and then part of the problem is that if it turns out initially it's only the mother, then the kid only responds to the mother. And so then the father said, look, I'm just no use here. And so uh, understanding this is a repeated game, it turns out that unless you get the dad involved early on, the dad can then make it credible that he's not involved. Uh, so uh, this is, again, an example of looking forward and reasoning backward and understanding uh, how it will play out. Um, Kids are, of course, the most natural strategist because, uh, one, you know, they don't care if they're, they're up at 2 in the morning. They're, what else are they going to have to do? It's, uh, uh, they're bored. Uh, or uh, the, the high school kid who uh, wants the car and you've got friends over, your boss over, and is thinking about, you know, making a scene then, and you don't want that to happen, they, they understand that. Uh, but the great one is the question of punishment. How do you make punishments credible? Because you know that you don't really want to punish the kid. Uh, it's not in your interest. I mean, you, you don't like doing that. And they know that, and they try and take advantage of it. So I, I'll give you two, uh, two fun or uh, amusing examples of this. Uh, when one kid misbehaves, uh, you punish the other one for it. You say, well, the kid will say that's totally unfair. But that kid will be sure to punish the one who misbehaved. So look, so uh, Tommy, if you misbehave, I'm going to... Uh, punish your older brother. Uh, and you know that uh, Tommy fears his older brother uh, much more than he ever fears anything you do. Uh, and so that would be uh, one way of doing it. And then uh, I'll give you an example in terms of weight loss. 
uh, two of my colleagues uh, want to lose weight. Uh, and so they bet each other $5,000 that they would get down to some weight level and that they would stay below it. Now, it worked. And then, after about six months, one of them started creeping up a little bit. And his friend called him on the bet and took the $5,000 from him, which really, really got his friend mad. In fact, may even have broken their friendship. And when I asked, what was going on? Why did he do this? And he said, well, I want to be sure that if I went up in my weight, he would call me. And I was afraid that if I let him off, well, then he let me off. But I can tell you this now, that if I go above my proposed weight, I know that he's going to call me on it because he's so mad at me for having called him. And that way of making that enforcement credible uh, is kept my friend uh, actually the weight he wants. And turning that back to kids, well, I punish the kid not because I want to, but because if I don't, he or she will punish me for not punishing them. And so that's sort of the type of argument you make.